Britton. I'm an adult epileptologist at Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. Today I would like to talk about first aid and seizures. Seizures are a frightening event. When, when witnessing someone have a seizure, a person's first instinct is to try to help them. A fear of patients and families and friends of uh, persons affected by epilepsy are, uh, what do I do if this person that I care about uh, so much has a seizure in front of me. What's the right thing to do? Unfortunately, there are a lot of myths out there as to what should be done during a seizure that I hope to dispel today. Um, and there are a lot of important factors to keep in mind, which I also hope to uh, relay uh, in this discussion. Seizures are a common event. Epilepsy affects 0.5 to 1% of the population. So chances are, um, People in your workplace, people in your classroom have seizures, you may or may not know it if their seizures are under control. Uh, the, the first thing to keep in mind when witnessing a seizure is to realize that over 95% of seizures are self-limited events. It will stop in one to two minutes after onset. But it's also important to note that the chance that a person will die during a seizure is quite low, very low. So most people who have a seizure will recover fully from that seizure, and most seizures do not require uh, an acute treatment with medication for it to stop. Seizures can lead to injury. Uh, they can also lead to cessation of breathing. They may also lead to uh, aspiration of saliva from their mouth into their lungs. So. If one sees a person go into seizure, it's important to do things to help minimize the chance of those things occurring. Probably the most important thing to do during a witness, uh, what we call generalized tonic or tonic-clonic or grand mal seizure, is to lay the uh, patient on their side, right or left. Uh, you don't want to have the person lay on their back, typically, because if they have increased saliva formation in their mouth, they may be at risk of inhaling it into their lungs, which could lead to a pneumonia. So laying the person on their side will help prevent that. Also, occasionally, persons after a seizure will vomit. You do not want the person to be laying flat on their back if that were to occur. So it's prudent to lay the person on their side so that if that happens, uh, they're less likely to aspirate it into their lungs. Persons during a seizure uh, can, look fright, uh, can look frighteningly bluish in color because often during a seizure they don't breathe properly during that portion of time. As a result, they may get a bluish discoloration around their mouth or in their limbs uh, due to retention of carbon dioxide uh, due to the uh, lack of temporary lack of ventilation. This does not mean that mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation is needed. Once the seizure is over, the person typically will start breathing again, and no resuscitative, resuscitative measures are usually necessary. Another important factor related to that that I want to make sure uh, people realize is uh, there's often a misguided notion that a person during a seizure may uh, swallow their tongue, so to speak. So it often was recommended in the past uh, that one reach in and pull the person's tongue forward to prevent that from happening. Patients with uh, patients during a seizure do not swallow their tongue, period. There's no need to put a, your finger or any other object in the person's mouth during a seizure to pull the tongue forward. It's absolutely not necessary. Putting your finger in a person's mouth during a seizure may be extremely hazardous to you and to the patient. They may bite your finger. Uh, their jaw often is very clenched during a seizure, so it's just a bad idea, uh, and it's not necessary to do. One question often arises is, uh, should should I call the uh, should I call 911 if I see someone have a seizure? Um, for families, who, uh, for families of a person affected by epilepsy, most, most of the time during a seizure, one does not need to go to the emergency room. Uh, typically, by the time the patient gets to the emergency room, they will have started to recover 
and there frankly will not be much that the emergency room will do. They really are not in a good position to make medication changes because they don't know the patient uh, in a long-term fashion. Um, many times no test is needed and typically people will recover back to baseline after enough time period for recovery has occurred. So typically there's no need to go to the emergency room. I usually advise my patients, however, if um, th their seizure lasts longer than five minutes, emergency personnel should be, uh, should be contacted. This is because uh, occasionally people can go into a seizure emergency called status epilepticus in which acute medical intervention is needed. Um, however, if the seizure is less than five minutes, that most of the time is not necessary. If a person has uh, typically one seizure per episode, but is witnessed to have two or three seizures on the same day, I think that would warrant evaluation in an emergency room to make sure no uh, additional medication problem has arisen to lead to the increased uh, number of seizures. Anytime, however, a person is feared to have injured themselves during a seizure, that would prompt emergency room evaluation. During a seizure, patients can dislocate their shoulder, they can suffer compression fractures in their spine, and other injuries. Sometimes during a seizure, pers uh, people will fall, they may incur an injury or fracture in the process of doing that. So if there's any concern that an injury may have occurred, uh, then uh, emergency room evaluation would be uh, typically appropriate. So the important factors to remember, seizures are usually self-limited. They'll last one to two minutes and then stop the vast majority of the time. Um, people do not require CPR. Uh, during seizures, except in rare circumstances. Uh, most people who've had a seizure do not need to go to the emergency room unless it's longer than five minutes or they're experiencing a cluster of recurrent seizures, which is not uh, typical for that individual, or if there's concern that injury may have occurred. Thank you.